Good morning, everybody. So one thing I haven't been doing very well is taking roll. So I'm going to give out a holler. And if you're here, say I or here or whatever. So uh, Raina. Uh, Zach? Aye. <laughs> Alexis? Here. Uh, Caleb? Here. Sarah? All right, let me see. Oops. This thing. Okay, here come some people. It rain is here. So people are showing up now. All right, let me go back here. Rain is out here. Uh, okay, Sarah's now here. All right, Gabe. Gabe. Uh, Lily. Here. Tucker. Here. Grayson. Here. Uh, Grayson. Uh, Karina. Here. Gib. Gibby. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Ella. Here. William. Here. Bailey. Bailey. Here. Okay. Sophia. Here. Jaden. Jaden? Here. Oh, you are here. Okay. Uh, Morgan? Here. Jordan? Here. Audrey? I think Audrey's trying to get on. She just sent me a text saying, asking if I got an email yet. Well, she should have got an email. She should have got the email yesterday. Did you get the yeah. yesterday? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to tell her that. Okay, tell her to look at her email yesterday because I know she's in the group. If she still has, I'll send it to her, okay? Okay, so Audrey's going to be here. Uh, Gabe Gherkin, are you here? Okay. Let's see if I can send her the. See if I can send her the. What can I do here? Tell her I'm going to send it to her again. Okay. And you said it's Audrey, right? Oh. Yeah. Or Sophia, excuse me, correct? Come on. Okay, told, told her I sent it to her. Cool beans. 
I did. I don't know. Okay, we'll see how that works. Well, she's in. No, I just let her in. All righty. I'm just going to make sure that Gabe's not here. All right. So here's the situation. I gave you guys two tests. So I'm going to go both over both these tests at the same time. Does that make sense? Okay, hopefully it will, right? And um, if you have any type of issues, what you can do is privately chat with me. Somebody already said, hey, they found that I scored something that was, it was right and I scored it wrong. And so there's one person that found their stuff. And so I changed it. Okay, I just verified that that was correct. Or if you have other things, just let me know, okay? Um, but if there's something about clarification, you can interrupt me and say, hey, um, you know, like if I did something wrong in the explanation or anything, but I don't think that, otherwise just wait till the end. All right, so I'm going to share the screen with you. And like I said, I'm gonna be doing two tests at a time. So the people that, were in the abyss had a different test than the people were in, that were in class. Okay. And do you see a test? Okay, I see one thumbs up. Okay, let me get it so I can see it. All right, so here is one version. And both of these. What I would do, and I don't know if you've ever seen this before. This might be the first time. I'm gonna draw, I know you've seen the unit circle. So what I do is I make the unit circle and I do these two points first. And so this is one zero, this is zero one. And then there are three other points, okay. Um, now, this is pi over six. This is pi over four. This is pi over three. And your calculators, they need to be in radians. And then this is pi over two. And then if you look at this, and this is what I, the way I used to teach it when I used to teach trig, this is really the square root of four over two, and I'll show you why that's important. Because this next one is going to be the square root of three over two. And this is really, I know it's one half, but that can be viewed as the square root of one over two. And then four, three, the next one is two, the square root of two over two. Zero, one, square root of two over two. So I'm going to four, three, two, one, square root of one over two or one half and the square root of three over two. And so that's just a little way that helped me get those numbers. And the other thing you have to remember is that X equals the cosine of theta and Y equals the sine of theta. And the reason that is, is really we have a right triangle. Here's theta. This hypotenuse is one. Uh, this distance is X, this distance is Y. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and that's why these are true. So here are all your cosine values, here are all your sine values. Okay, so that's my little review. So the sine of pi over six, here's pi over six, here's sine, it's gonna be one half. If I look at the other test, I have pi over three, the sine of pi over three, square root of three over two that's up here. So the cosine of pi over four is square root of two over two. And this is what I like about uh, pi over four. If you remember the square root of two over two you, and forgot about sine or cosine, don't worry, they're the same value. And since sine and cosine are the same at tangent, sine over cosine is tangent, so this is gonna be one. 
this is going to be the sine of pi over three, which is the square root of three over two, over cosine, or divided by cosine, which is one half. So I always write the divide sign. You don't have to do it this way. But, and I know you're taught to multiply by the reciprocal. I don't do that. I just divide straight across. And the square root of three divided by one is one, as is the square root of three. Two divided by two is one, so I get the square root of three. That's just how I do that. The cosine of zero is one. The sine of zero is zero. The sine of zero is one. The cosine of zero is zero. The, excuse me, the cosine of zero is one. Screwed up there. And this is zero. I'm going too fast. Uh, the cosine of pi over two is zero. The, co the sine of pi over two is one. The cosine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. The cosine of one half is zero. The tangent of pi over two is undefined because you're dividing by zero. The tangent of zero is zero. In other words, it's going to be zero divided by one. The tangent of zero uh, is zero. I already said that. And here it's undefined. The sine of pi is zero. The cosine of pi is a negative one because pi is way over here. It's 180 degrees. Now, some of you are writing the angle measure. These are ratios. They're the ratios of these x lengths, or these y lengths, and these x lengths, and the hypotenuse. They're all given lengths. So it's saying if this has a length of 1, that's the longest that side of these right triangles you're going to have. You can't have pi as an answer. Pi is going to be part of the angle measurement. So each of those were worth one point. These right here. Well, I needed to, these are each worth two and a half points. And if you figured out the hypotenuse wrong, I automatically just took off two points. So the re, this is the reciprocal, which is cosecant of theta. It's just gonna be four over three. To find the rest of them, I have to use a right triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so this is going to be the square root, because it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's going to be the square root of 16 minus 9, which is the square root of 7. So that means that the cosine of theta is going to be the square root of 7 over 4. And the secant of theta is going to be 4 over the square root of 7 that the tangent of theta is going to be three over the square root of seven, and the cotangent of theta is equal to the square root of seven over three. Now notice, I don't rationalize the denominator. In, AP, in calculus, AP calculus, you don't have to, nor do you have to simplify like the square root of eight to two times the square root of two. Um, they don't care, and be serious, you don't have time. Uh, this, the sine of theta is, so I'm going to have the cosecant of theta be 3. Then again, I'm going to have a right triangle. Here's opposite, here's theta. Here's opposite, here's hypotenuse. And so this is going to be 9 minus 1, which is the square root of 8. So that means that cosine of theta is equal to the square root of eight over three. Secant of theta is going to be three over the square root of eight. Uh, the tangent of theta is equal to one over the square root of eight. And the cotangent of theta is equal to the square root of eight. I'll do this one next and then I'll slide across. This is going to be, this is going to be the secant of theta is equal to four thirds. Here's theta, here's three, here's four, square root of 16 minus nine. We did this one, square root of seven. 
So the sine of theta is going to be the square root of 7 over 3. The cosecant of theta is going to be 3 over the square root of 7. Um, the tangent of theta. Oh, excuse me. I did this yet last period. This is tangent of theta. This is cotangent of theta. Sorry about this. So I got the sine of theta, which is equal to the square root of 7 over 4. And so the cosecant of theta is equal to 4 over the square root of 7. This one, I have uh, the secant of theta is equal to 4. So here's theta, here's 1, here's 4. This is going to be 16 minus 1, which is the square root of 15. So the sine of theta is going to be the square root of 15 over 4. Over four. The cosecant of theta is going to be 4 over the square root of 15. Uh, tangent of theta is going to be the square root of 15. And cotangent of theta is going to be 1 over the square root of 15. This one's a little different. Uh, this is cotangent of theta is equal to 3 over x. So I'm going to draw my triangle. And I'm going to call this x opposite over adjacent. And this is going to be the square root of x squared plus 9, which is not x plus 3. And so the sine of theta is going to be x over 3. The, excuse me x over the square root of x squared plus 9. Uh, the cosecant of theta is going to be the square root of x squared plus 9 over x. The cosine of theta is equal to 3 over the square root of x squared plus 9. And the secant of theta is equal to the square root of x squared plus 9 over 3. Uh, all righty, let's go to the other side. This is, here's my right triangle. This is the cotangent of theta is equal to 2 over x. So here's x, here's 2, here's the square root of x squared plus 4, which is not x plus 2. And so the cosine of theta is equal to 2 over the square root of x squared plus 4. The secant of theta is equal to x square root of x squared plus 4 over 2. The sine of theta is equal to x over the square root of x squared plus 4. And the cosecant of theta is equal to the square root of x squared plus 4 over 2. And cosecant. Well, the sine of theta, the sine of theta is equal to 1 over x. So this is x, this is 1, this is the square root of x squared minus 1, which means that the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over x square root of x squared minus 1. The cotangent of theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1. The cosine of theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1 over x. And the secant of theta is equal to x over the square root of x squared minus 1. I'm getting tired. And this one, the cosine of theta is equal to 1 over x. Here's 1, here's x, here's the square root of x squared minus 1. So the sine of theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1 over x. Cosecant of theta is equal to x over the square root of x squared minus 1. Uh, the tangent of theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1. And cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. All right. Really messy, messy, messy. But I think you guys got the idea, right? Ratios and Pythagorean theorem. We will be doing this again second trimester. All right.
and false ones. Both of these were the same almost. So this is not true. This is false. I think I've talked about that quite a bit already. This right here, this symbol is called a radical. This is called the square root symbol. This is called the fourth root symbol. This is called the sixth root symbol. They're all even roots. And by definition, the even roots have to be the primary or positive answer. So this one would be false. You would only get seven. This also would be false. You only get five. However, this is a parabola. And it's a parabola that looks like this. So if the function was, if f of x was equal to x squared minus 25, and I made this equal to zero, I would come up with this equation. And this graph has two x-intercepts. What are they? Five and a negative five. So this is true. Therefore, this is true, because it's asking, what are the two solutions that give me 36? It's different than this. This has to be positive. This allows you to be positive or negative, because you're trying to find the solution. This is also true. This is also, well, it's the same problem, also true. This right here is false because you can never divide by zero. This, I'm going to check. So what I can do is I can multiply. The question is, is a cubed minus b cubed equal to a squared plus a b plus b squared times a minus b. So I multiply both sides by a minus b. Now I'm going to distribute. I'm going to get a cubed plus a squared b plus a b squared. And now I'm going to multiply by the minus b. And I'm going to get a minus a squared b minus a b squared minus b cubed. And notice this, these interior terms are opposites. So I'm left with this. So this is true. In fact, that's how you factor this. And I told Mr. Karsh, make sure you guys practice factoring. So I'll blame it on him. Again, on this one, I want to see if a cubed plus b cubed is equal to the product of a squared minus a b plus b squared times a plus b. And so I'm going to multiply first by a, and I get a cubed minus a squared b plus a b squared. And now I'm going to multiply by a positive b, and I'm going to get plus a squared b minus a b squared plus b cubed. And again, these are going to simplify. I'm left with a squared plus b cubed. So that is also true. Now, there's this question. These are both undefined. But are they equivalent? Well, if you think about it, if I have 8 divided by 2, and I get 4, that means 8 equals 2 times 4. So if this was equal to some number, I'll make it equal to c. That means 0 has to equal to c times 0. Well, that works for every number. There is an infinite number of answers. I just don't know which one to pick. Could I choose three? Yeah. Three times zero is zero. 
13 times 0 is 0, pi times 0 is 0, all numbers work. But it's undefined because I don't know which number. Now let's look at this. This means 8 equals 0 times c. Well, there is no answers that work. So this is undefined because we have no solutions. In fact, this right here, we're going to use calculus to find the specific solution because we can find some solutions of 0 divided by 0. And so this is false. OK. So here are the next problems. And right here it says, okay, take a look at F. Well, if I look at this and I graph this, it's a parabola that looks like this. So what is my domain? And you could have used this. Some other people use a different form. But you got to make sure it's an open interval. All reals work. Or you could have said, a lot of people do this, x such, x is the element of the reals. So I let you use that also. What's your range? Your range means it includes 1 and all numbers bigger than that. So this one looks like this. Here's this parabola. This is, down here is a negative 2 for a y value. So again, my domain is from, is all reals. But my range goes from negative 2 to infinity. And you got to make sure you have the closed bracket here because a negative 2 can be used here. Oh, excuse me, not negative 2. Oh, no, it is a negative 2. I'm sorry negative two. Here the next one, this is a line, so all reals work for both of them. Here you're going to add them together and you're going to get x squared plus x minus one. So again all reals work, but what's the vertex? Well, in calculus, we have a quick way to figure it out, but you guys don't know it yet. And so I'm going to go to my menu, and I'm going to graph this. And I will do this also. Um, I will do this on a TI. And so right here, the vertex is the minimum point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go shift G solve minimum. And it tells me that, that my smallest Y point is a negative 1.25. So that means a negative 1.25 is my smallest and it goes bigger. Okay. I'm going to do this one by using a TI. So on this, again, it's negative. This is the line, again. So I'm going to put this here. Now I'm going to add them together. I'm going to get x squared plus x plus 3. I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to put that in there. x squared plus x plus 3, and I'm going to graph it. And right here is my vertex. So I'm going to go second. It's right here by trace. There's a little button here that says calc. And I'm going to push it, and there's a minimum right here. So I'm going to take the number 3. On the TI, though, you got to go a little bit to the left. you got to go a little bit to the right. 
and I ask you to guess, I just press enter one more time, and it says right here 2.75. So that means, again, my domain is all reals, and this is going to be 2.75 and above. This is the product. I'll do this product first. So it's going to be x squared plus 1 times x plus 2. And I multiplied through by x squared, and I got x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. And this is cubed, so it's an odd polynomial, which means it goes up forever and down forever. So everything's all the reals. That's the same type of thing on this portion of the, on this test. The only difference is you're going to have X cubed plus X squared minus two X minus two. But again, it's an odd function, which means it goes forever up and forever down. So it's negative infinity, positive infinity. Now these problems are all worth three points. This is division. So this is gonna be x squared minus two over x plus one. So that means it's gonna be all reals, except I can't have a negative one. So I had a lot of people do this negative infinity to a negative one, union, union, negative one to positive infinity. Now I'm gonna graph to look at the range. Okay, so this line shouldn't exist. And I think there's a way to get rid of it. Let me look at second format. And I'm gonna get rid of the grid. The grid is off. Maybe that's not it. So anyway, if you take a look up here, it goes on forever up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. So this will be all reals. However, on the other problem, I'm gonna go back to y equals and change this to plus one and plus two. Now here, it's going to be x squared plus one over x plus two. My domain again is going to go from negative infinity and negative two and negative two to infinity. And my range now, now if I look to graph it, okay, I could see a minimum right here. And so I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to do it on this graph. It's a little bit faster. Let's do something wrong. Oh. Hmm. What is in it like? Like something here.
Yeah, so you can see there's a minimum point here and a maximum point. I'm going to find both of those. I'll find the minimum. And so this is 0 0.472. You cannot use zero. I did not give you credit. But, you know, you didn't know where to round, so I was a little bit more flexible. And I'm going to ask you this. Uh, Jordan, what's my favorite number? Three. Okay, you got to go through at least three decimals in AP Calc. That's a rule. That's not my rule. That's AP Calc's rule. Okay. You can go more than three, but you can't go any less than three. And if I do the maximum, I believe I get a negative 8.472. So what I would be required to do here is go from a negative infinity to a negative 8.472 and 0 0.4 and 0 0.472 to positive infinity and i have to include those points okay the composition of this looks like this x plus 2 squared plus 1 which is x squared plus 2x times x times 2 is 4x right because i have two that are the same plus four plus one is five. So again, I can put anything into there. But again, I'm going to have a vertex. So I'm gonna put that in there again. And I'm gonna put x squared plus four x plus five. And I'm gonna draw that. And I can see my vertex right here. I'm gonna find it. And I believe it's one. So it can be one, two, and three. Okay. Anything I need to clarify? This one I need to finish. So I gotta make sure I do that. So I'm going to have x plus one squared minus two. That's going to give me x squared plus two x minus one. I'm gonna do that on this one also. It has a vertex right here. Find that smallest point. And it's a negative two. So again, I have all reals. And then I have negative two to infinity. All right. Next shot. Find the intercepts. So the intercepts here, here are the two problems. Here I said, okay, you have a y-intercept, it's zero, negative 12. Here it's zero, negative 12. So same y-intercept. Here the x-intercept, I can factor this to zero equals x squared plus x minus 12, that gives me x plus 4, x minus 3. So I have a negative 4, 0, and 3, 0. This one can be factored 0 equals x minus 4, x plus 3. So I get 4, 0, and negative 3, 0. So that one's worth three points. Number three. So what are the points of intersection? What I did here is I solved for x and I got y plus one equals uh, x. And then I had y plus one equals y squared plus four. That gives me zero equals y squared minus y plus three. And so what I did is I used the discriminant to see if there's any solutions. A is equal to one, B is equal to a negative one, 
and c is equal to three, and the discriminant is the square root of b squared minus four ac. Well, the discriminant is really this, because that can't be negative. If b squared minus four ac is less than zero, I know there are no solutions. That means these would not touch. So if I plug this in, I'm gonna have one minus four times one times three. And I can see that's negative, so this has no intersections. This one, however, I did the same thing, and I said y minus one equals x, so that means y minus one equals y squared minus three. That means zero equals y squared minus y minus two. Well, that's factorable. So y minus two, y plus one. So that means y equals two, y equals a negative one. So it asks for points, so I gotta have points. And y is two and y is a negative one. And if I plug in two here, x is one. And if I plug in a negative one here, x is a negative two. Uh, explain mathematically slope. That was the same on both of them. I always say uh, slope. And people said is rise over run. That works. Slope is the rate a line increases or decreases. That was my answer. Number five, I asked you to graph this. So one comma four is here. The slope is a negative three over two. You have that. On this one, it's four one. And then it's down two and over three. Well, that's tough. So what I did is I went up three and over two do my graph. I never use slope intercept form. I always use uh, point slope form, which means this is what I'll write. Y equals a negative two thirds X plus four, excuse me, X minus four plus one. And now I check. If I put four into here, will I get one? Yes, I will. Now, the reason why I do that, let's say you're taking the AP test and you come with this and it's correct. You do not need to go any further. Everything's fine. But you decide, hey, I don't like this form for whatever reason, and you do this. You forget to divide by three. And you say this. They won't give you any credit, even though you had it right here. So I stop here. Right there, I stop. I don't do any more work. Plus, it gives me more time. Because I'm stressed, and I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake. And sure enough, I did. So I just stopped there. So you'll see me do that on this one, too. So here the slope is negative three halves. I'm gonna say y is a negative three halves. X minus one plus four. I always check if I plug in one, this is zero. And if I add four, my y gets to be four. So it works. Okay, the slope of the line. So I chose three minus one over a negative one minus a negative eight, and I get two sevenths. On this one, I get eight minus one over a negative one minus a negative three, and I get seven halves. Uh, the slope of this one, I wrote three y equals fifth, uh, excuse me, a negative one x plus 15. So my slope is going to be a negative one-third. A negative x over three is wrong. The slope has to be a number. This is an expression. X can be anything I want it to be. 
So I'll choose so it's not a negative one. I'll choose it to be 19. Now it's wrong. So don't put in your variable. Put in your leading coefficient. Over here, um, I'm going to get y is equal to a negative 3x plus 15. So my slope is a negative 3. My y-intercept, if I get y by itself, I'm going to get negative 4x plus 8. So my y-intercept is 0, 8. Or y-intercept equals 8. I think I left both of those. This one, I'm going to have to divide by 4. So my it's going to be 0, 2 because I'll end up getting 4y equals a negative x plus 8, and then everything has to be divided by 4, and that's how be that becomes 2. Number 9, an equation that passes through 7, 2. 7, 2 is right here. So I got a slope of a negative 3. I just said y equals a negative 3x minus 7 plus 2. A slope of 0 goes this way, it's a horizontal line. Y is exactly the same on a horizontal line, so it's Y equals two. Undefined is a vertical line that goes through that point, so that's X equals seven. Likewise here, this is gonna be Y equals a negative three X times X minus two plus seven. I always check, I plug two in there, I'll get seven. Here it's going to be y is equal to 7. Here it's going to be x is equal to 2. You want a slope of a line that passes through this point. So I'm going to have 7 minus a negative 23, which is 30. And down here I have a negative 18 minus 18, which is a negative 36, which is a negative 5, 6. So I said it, y equals a negative 5, 6, x minus 18 minus 23. I chose that point. Again, I'm not simplifying. Over here, I'm going to have 23 minus 7 over negative 18 minus 18. My gosh, I got the same thing in negative 5, 6. So 6. So I have y equals a negative 5, 6, x minus 18 minus 7. Write an equation that passes through this point. So I'm going to have x minus 3 minus 4. I just got to figure out my slope. I want the same slope as this. So I'm going to have a negative 5y equals 2x plus 9. So my slope over here is a negative 2 fifths. So I just put in a negative 2 fifths. This again, I'm going to have x plus 3 minus, or excuse me, plus 4. So I check. If I play, put a negative 3 in here, do I get 4? Yes. And so I'm going to get negative 2y equals 5x plus 9. So my slope over here is going to be a negative 5 halves. So y equals a negative 5 halves. This is perpendicular. So it is the opposite and reciprocal. So here I get y is equal to a negative 2x minus 5. So this is a slope of a negative 2. I'm going to use a positive 1 half x minus 6, minus 4. And over here, I get y equals a negative 1x plus 5. Well, the reciprocal of a negative 1 is a negative 1, but if I make it positive, it's 1. So y equals 1 times x plus 6 plus 4. Usually, I just write that as x plus 10. Because multiplying by 1 isn't too bad. You guys are doing well. So this one right here, um, it says write linear equation where C is the daily cost. So I'd have to have C, X is the number of miles. It's gotta be in dollars. So this is what I needed for this. For this one, I did C equals, it's 0.45x plus 175. Uh, the definition of a function, a relation, which is a group of ordered pairs where E 
each input as, or you could say x value or domain as only one output. I needed to see that there, that's what happens. So when you put something in, you're only gonna get one thing out. Uh, to graph this, so when I plug in zero, I get four. It's gonna be an open circle because it doesn't have four. Now this number is positive, so it's gonna go up. And it's a parabola. Here when I put in zero, I get two, and it's closed because it includes zero. And the slope is a negative one half, so it's down one over two. And this is for only values that are greater than or equal to zero. So on this, the right side of the y axis, this is on the left side. It's a function. It passes the vertical line test. Then if I come down to here, I'm trying to see f of a negative five. Well, f of a negative five is less than zero. It's not greater than zero. It's not equal to zero. So I don't do this computation. I don't even care about that computation. I plug in a negative five into here. So f of a negative five can only have one answer because it's a function. Nine. Over here, it's the same type of thing. I'm at four, I have an open circle, but this goes down. And so I'm going to be a little bit more picky. I'm gonna put a negative one in there. Excuse me, I'm gonna put a negative one in there and that's gonna be a negative one because a negative one squared is a positive one and then I make it negative, it's gonna be three. And then when I put a negative two in there, it's gonna be zero. So there's my parabola on this side. Here I'm at two, my slope is one half. And so now I'm asking what's f of five? I don't care about that. Five is not less than zero. It's greater than zero. So f of five is gonna be one half of five plus two. Half of five is two and a half plus two is 4.5. I can't get 29 or 21 or whatever else you got. I can only have one answer because it's a function. Last page. So here, um, I'm gonna put three into G. So G of three is gonna be pi over three times three, which gives me pi. And then I'm gonna plug pi into tangent. So F of pi is gonna be the tangent of pi, which is zero. Over here, I'm gonna put two into G. I'm gonna have pi over two times two. And, oh, I get pi again. I like pi. Sophia, what's your favorite pie? Apple. Apple. Apple is a good pie. I like it. All right, and so now I'm gonna put pi into F and I'm gonna have the cosine of pi, which is a negative one. Absolute value, this means this shifts to the right. In other words, if I put zero, I get one. The absolute value of one is one. When I put, uh, excuse me, that's wrong. When I, it shifts to the left. When I put a negative one, I get zero. Sorry about that. When I put zero in, I get one. When I put in one, I get two. And it keeps going like this. Then over here, if I put a negative two in there, I get a negative one, but the absolute value is one. When I put a negative three in there, I get a negative two, but the absolute value is two. I get this B-like thing. And this one is the same thing, except it was at two. If I put three, I get one. If I put four, I get two. If I put in one, I get one. If I put in zero, I get two. If I put negative one, I get three. It looks like this. This is a step function between negative three and three. Step function gives you the greatest integer that does not exceed a negative three. 
So a negative three and negative 2.9, I got to choose a negative three because a negative three is less than those numbers. So it looks like this. I was really pleased with how many people got this one right. A lot of you did. So that's that. This is the same question, but I didn't have you do as many of them. Oops. Expanding this x squared minus 3x minus 3x is minus 6x minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. This one is simply the same thing x squared plus 6x plus 9. To expand this, you would, it is not x squared x cubed minus 1. You have to take x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 unless you know about Pascal's triangle. which means it's going to be x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. You're going to get the same thing if you multiply that out. This one's going to be the same thing, except it's going to be x cubed plus 3x plus 3x plus 1. This was the final one. Uh, yeah, they were the same. So what this means is you're going to put x plus h in here, because that's your input, and you're going to square it. So it's going to be x plus h squared minus x squared divided by h. So that's x squared. I have x times h and h times x, which is the same thing, which is 2xh plus h squared minus x squared over h. And then I get my red pen and I go wham, wham. Drop, drop, drop. And I'm going to get 2xh plus h squared over h which gives me h times 2x plus h over h. And I'm going to go whammo again. And my answer is 2x plus h. And I'm tired. So um, Dave's been out there waiting. No one told me. Gabe, I'm sorry, you missed my entire explanation, but it's going to be recorded and you can watch it uh, on Schoology and YouTube, okay? How long have you been waiting? Like a long time? I don't even think he's there. All righty. Um, so if you've got any questions, you can chat with me privately. Otherwise, I've made, I sent you an email or through Schoology about I changed the pro, I took off. What was that? That was weird. Um, I got rid of the two problems on 1.2, I'm going to bring those back to 1.4, and I'm going to talk about them on next Tuesday because you have a quiz on on Monday, and it will not include the official definition of a limit. I need you to do a far better explanation about that, and I did a lousy job yesterday. So I had a talk with my dog Rosie. She wagged her tail. She licked my hand barked a couple of times and that means she really liked you guys. And so uh, convinced me to make adjustments. So that's what I did. So if you have any questions, you can uh, chat with me. Otherwise, I'm going to quit sharing this. I'll stay on here. You have an assignment that's due by midnight tonight, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. So um, that's what we'll do. Some people have sent some chats. Uh, somebody did 
say uh, leave Gabe in and I didn't read it quick enough because I didn't see it. So Gabe, I am very, very, very sorry. So um, I will answer some questions about the homework. So Lily, what specifically? Um, okay, so it's on the one relating to the tables. Yep, and I've got it right here. I'm looking at it. Let me just get to... I'm going to share it, and you can describe what you're talking about. So it's one that's like consider the graph below and it looks like um I don't know if it is true but like a jump graph um and number two write a possible function that represents the graph I have no clue are you saying this one yeah number two okay well it's not a jump graph because it's continuous all the way through there's no okay. breaks but it is a piecewise graph Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you know it's, I would probably say that if you look at this, it has arrows, correct? And you get a little bit of uh, flexibility. I would say if that keeps continuing, you'll be right here to that point. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to use that point. So in other words, first of all, it's piecewise. Does that make sense to you why it's piecewise? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you ever, I don't know, if you ever walk down the streets of St. Cloud, you'll never see a parabola and a line holding hands. They just don't like each other. Okay. One's edgy and one's not. Okay. That was supposed to be humor, but, um, so what we can do here is we know this, that I'm going to have f of x and I'm going to have, it's going to have two parts, one dealing with five and the other one dealing with five. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, now you, you're you gonna have some creative choices here, okay? Some of the creative choices are, um, first of all, this is going to be less than, and this is going to be greater than. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So one of these, you're going to say, all right, I'm going to choose which of these to include it. And so it doesn't matter. It, it's going to be right no matter where. Okay. You just can't have both of them empty. Okay. Okay. And so what would, which one do you want it to be? I'll let you choose. Um, X is less than five. Okay, so it's less than or equal to now, correct? Yeah. Okay, so this point here is one comma five. Excuse me, I'm wrong, five comma one, correct? Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna write this thing as X minus five plus one. Would you agree with that? Yeah, okay. Okay, and then I'm going to determine what kind of slope do you think that is? One over one? Right, you could say it's one. Now, um, William may say it's 0.8. Uh, Sophia may say it's 1.2. They're not going to be wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because we have no numbers to verify what it is. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to create a parabola that includes the point zero zero and five comma one. Okay. 
okay. Yeah. Okay. And you want to be able to, so you're just going to, and what I would do is go to my calculator here. And I'm not going to do this for you, but I'm going to give you an idea of what I would do. Okay. Okay. I want it to go through zero, zero, and I want it to go through five comma one, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I know I'm, I went to the right something and up one, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in parentheses x minus and I'm going to say three because it kind of looks like it's at three I'm kind and I'm just guessing and I think it's kind of ah oh, maybe five plus five oh, okay so I'm going to write parentheses squared plus five, right? Isn't that a translation of three to the right and up five? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to graph it and I'm going to do this. I'm going to set my window from zero to five. That's because that's all I care about, right? Because I already know I got this portion done. I just want to see this portion. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to make y equal to zero. Oh, shoot it. Because I just got the first quadrant. So now I'm going to draw. Well, that's wrong, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because it's going the wrong way, right? Yeah. So come back here, and how do I make it go down? Well, I got to make it negative. So I'm going to make it negative. I draw. Ooh. Looks like it has to go this way a little bit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, exit here, and I'm going to sh shift it. It's too far to the right. So let me make it two. And I'm going to draw. Ooh, it's too much, isn't it? Because remember, I wanted at zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to fool around with it to see where it's going to be here at. So it's zero, zero, and then it stops here at five, one. And you're just going to have to put some numbers in there and play around with it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, a little more than it did. Yeah. And it, now, here's my philosophy of homework. You do not need to be perfect with me on homework. I don't check every problem. I check to see that you created effort and you were okay that, you know what, I worked on this really hard and I made a mistake. And I'll see the mistake and that'll be stuff that'll address and fix. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So having this conversation of how to do this, you may not be, it, you may not do it perfectly like it looks in the, um, on the piece of paper. I probably could go like this rather than have it go up to 10, maybe have it go up to seven. Okay. Okay. And then get, uh, and fool around with it to get it as best as I can. And maybe it won't be exactly the way you want it to be, but it'll be pre pretty close. It'd be a lot easier if we had some values here, correct? Yeah. The idea that I want you to know is that it's a piecewise graph. You should be able to come up with pretty close to this line and that this is a line and this is a parabola. And those are the two pieces of this graph. Okay? Yeah. Right, and then you're gonna approximate, okay, what am I getting when I approach this? Well, you should be able to see what that is. It's gonna be more work trying to come up with a graph than doing this chart, okay? But you're gonna make up these values based on this information. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, now that I have the um, function, I can work out yeah. the table. Okay, anybody else have any questions or comments about that particular problem? I'm really glad you asked that one.
not about the problem, but do you want us to submit the pictures of our homework on to Schoology or email it to you? Either is fine. Okay. Yeah, whatever is ever convenient for you. And um, do you, Tucker, do you have an iPhone? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, when you take a picture, you got to change the setting so it's a JPEG. You okay. probably know that already, but you can go in there and change the settings so it's a JPEG because it does okay. a different type of format that makes it a more beautiful picture. But to send it, you'll, in, that was a big issue on, on the AP exam when people had to submit their answers, you know, because everything was online, that mm. they had to change that over. And I think that's the issue I had with your stuff. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Anybody else have a question? I have a question on the one that says complete the chart below to find the limit of like E sine X or something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. So this is the biggest thing you got to do. We do not do degrees in this class. Okay. So what kind of calculator do you have? Casio. Okay, so when you go to Casio, you got to make sure it's in radians. So you want to go shift menu. Because I think it says format on yours, doesn't it? Does your screen kind of look like that? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to use your down arrow. And since you're on your way there, you see this baby that says derivative? It's going to make your life wonderful if you turn that on by pressing an F1. You're going to be really happy that you did that. It may even make you grin with glee, okay? Because you can check your work instantly. And then you're going to continue down, and somewhere it says, oh, angle. So when you have angle, you have cho uh, choices of degree, radians, and gradients. We don't do gradients, and we don't do degrees. We do radians. And the reason we do radians, it's a lot easier to graph. Degrees are terrible to graph. Because pi is around the number three, right? Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there are 180 to section, little tiny marks you'd have to make between <laughs> zero and three to be able to graph in degrees, and we don't do that. So that's how you want to do that, okay? So the next thing you're going to do then is you're going to go to your uh, graph and you're going to do this you're going to delete that and you're going to put the sine of x divided by x oops what am I doing Through the program, Charles. There we go. So this is what you got. So then you're going to go to your table. And you're going to put in a negative 0.1. So when I see that right away, what do you think the limit is as you're approaching from the left, just by your first one? One. One. It looks like it's going to be one, right? And so you want to put, in the, put the rest of them in at, from the left. Oops, too many. And that even looks closer to one, doesn't it? Now your calculator, especially if you have a TI, because TI doesn't have the processing capability that a Casio does, may round it to one. But it, so what it's doing is, you know, just guessing, saying I think it's one. So you just put in what your calculator gives you, okay? My guess is you're getting something weird because you were in degrees. Then what will you put at zero? One. No. You have to put that dash there because division by zero is undefined. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not going to be continuous. 
There's no value there. Okay. Any other questions for the good of the group? Yeah, I have one. Just let me find it here really quick. Okay. Is it on this particular one or is it on the other one? It's on the graphing one. Okay. Is it number three? Yeah, that whole last page. Ooh, yeah, that's a killer, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so is it, it looks like this, correct? Yeah. So what they're testing here, William, there are no numbers here, are they? No. Okay. And you got to realize that these are not asymptotes because there's a value here. They're just showing, this is probably an asymptote. Okay, because it doesn't look like these are going to cross. But this one has a point on it. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this may be an asymptote going down here. This may be an asymptote going, because you can have an asymptote going in one direction and not the other. And this is an asymptote going here for that line, but not for these lines, okay? So any one in particular, or you just want me to pick a few? Um, well, my first one was D, so I wasn't sure whether uh, the answer would be negative infinity or the limit does not exist. Uh, you're going to say you, okay, I'm approaching B from the right. And so it does not exist because the graph is going to negative infinity. All right. Okay. So does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Okay. There's no uh, number that you're going to have, but we are, when we talk about the last section of this chapter, it's on, uh, limits to infinity it's telling you the direction that the graph is going but there is no numerical limit so i put down um and i make it really quick i just write type in dne since neg since f is going to negative infinity or g in this case g is going to negative infinity and you could just write g arrow negative infinity that's good enough okay and then the other ones that were kind of confusing were J, K, and L. I wasn't really sure what to do yeah, with those. So J is, uh, here's B, correct? Yep. Okay. And so if I plot, is there, is there a point? This point is not defined at B, correct? Right. But this point is. Mm -hmm. So G of B is going to be that Y value. Okay, which is M? Correct. Okay. That's why it's there. And then would G of zero be K? I couldn't yes. tell because. Yeah, it, it's, it's poorly drawn. But that's what it would be. And then that would be the same for the limit of G of X. Right, because between these two spots, this function's continuous, correct? And so yeah. as you move here, since it's continuous here, it's going to be whatever that value is, whatever that Y value is. Okay. Yeah, it was just that K that was messing me up. It like, right. didn't look like it was on that right. point. So they get rid of numbers, one, because we all feel comfortable with numbers and we move to letters. And really, they're trying to get you to understand, do you know the difference between a Y, uh, a y value and the, a limit of a function? And so, like right here, they don't have, if this one would have been connected to here, you know, rather than go down, if it would have been connected to here, the limit would have been whatever this, for this value would be right here, but G of B would be this value. But that's not the case. They, they didn't make any that uh, were like that. So, but they are testing you on that tape there and that's what that's the kind of questions they like to ask okay and then one more question is that on the page before that under number eight there was 
problem F. It was just a weird notation that I didn't really get. Yeah, so F is saying the limit as X approaches two from the right. So here's two. You're coming from this side. Okay. So what do you think? That's what that means, just two from the right. X approaches two from the right. It's just zero. Well, I don't think so. Wait, X approaches. So here's my function, right? Mm -hmm. I'm getting closer and closer to two. You know, here I was at three, right? I went by three. And now mm -hmm. I'm at 2.1, aren't I way down here? Oh yeah, yeah, it does not exist. Yeah, because it's yeah. headed towards negative infinity, correct? Yeah. No, mine is weird. Like I printed out my sheet and it messed up that problem. So it, it does not say what your sheet says. So yeah, that's the problem. I've had that issue too. It's like you can't see the plus sign or you don't. If, yeah, especially pluses are to do that. I think sometimes, uh, you know, when you do them electronically, you almost got to get them a little bit bigger to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. I've had that same issue. Yeah. Actually, and the issue I have now with all these things I got going on between my document camera and uh, recording this and talking to you, I freeze up maybe six, seven times a day now. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think uh, my computer is beyond its capacity. Yeah. So there, yeah, because my printer apparently couldn't pick up whatever symbols there were. So it just put a bunch of question marks and I thought you were using those as variables. So there's a bunch yeah. of. Yeah, I've had that happen. I've had that with emails too, that there'll be question marks, which is really weird when they appear before and at the end of the sentence. Mm -hmm. but yeah. So um, just, just try to look at the, uh, the copy that's in the abyss because it is it's, it's pretty small print all right thank you yeah anybody else okay so a lot of homework scores are going to be going in which are going to change a lot of people's grades so in a positive direction so i'm just behind that and that stuff will get done all right, you'll see a significant change by tomorrow. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, thank you for your time. You guys have been wonderful as usual. And uh, it's almost 12.15, so I'm gonna end this session. I'm gonna look to see if there are any questions. Amen. Um.